And welcome back to Synthesis Workshop. Today we're going to be discussing the synthesis of Bryostatin 1 by the Winder Group in 2017. This is a total synthesis episode, so we'll go ahead and get right into it. The target that we're going to be looking at today is a marine natural product with limited natural abundance that targets protein kinase C. It is currently being investigated in clinical trials for HIV AIDS, cancer immunotherapy, and Alzheimer's disease. The question of how to synthetically access bryostatin-1 has many potential answers, but in this paper, the authors present a very elegant solution to this question. With the aim of making the synthesis as convergent as possible, the authors suggested disconnecting once on the left-hand side and once on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, they chose to disconnect using a Prinz annulation, while on the right-hand side, they chose to disconnect using an esterification. The authors proposed that using these two retrosynthetic disconnections, it would be possible to arrive at an A-ring fragment and a C-ring fragment, which could be united in the synthetic direction to arrive at the final target. Okay, so here's our C-ring fragment. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the authors made that. So to make the C-ring fragment, the authors start from a cheap heterocycle, dihydropyran, and they treat that with aqueous ammonium chloride, zinc, and perennial bromide. And under those conditions, an acetal aldehyde equilibrium is established, and that allows the aldehyde to act as the electrophile in the presence of an organozinc nucleophile to form this racemic diol product. That racemic diol is subjected to a sworn oxidation using oxaloyl chloride, DMSO, and triethylamine in order to do a double oxidation, both on the secondary and primary alcohol. Then, by applying a crotalation procedure using a menthone-derived crotal transfer reagent developed by Nokami, the authors were able to achieve an enantioselective addition to the aldehyde. Finally, treatment with four angstrom molecular sieves resulted in the reformation of the C-ring through a dehydrative cyclization. Treating this enantio-enriched disubstituted dihydropyran intermediate with magnesium monoperoxyphthalate in methanol resulted in the formation of a hydroxymethylketal. The mechanism for this is presumably epoxide formation by MMPP followed by the generation of an oxonium ion that can be diastereoselectively trapped by methanol as a nucleophile. Subsequent oxidation by desmartin pyridinane provided a ketone, which was actually the first step so far in the synthesis that required purification by chromatography. That ketone could be treated with potassium carbonate and methyl glyoxalate to do a condensation reaction, which resulted in the selective formation of the E enoate. Treating our enone with sodium borohydride and cerium trichloride heptahydrate allowed a loose reduction where Lewis acid activation of the ketone by cerium was used to disfavor conjugate reduction. Then, acylation with an anhydride bearing an alkyne resulted in the formation of an ester on the secondary alcohol. The virtue of installing the alkyne is that it can act as a masked version of the diene that appears in the final product, while simultaneously avoiding side reactions that could happen if we placed an alkene or diene there at this stage. For example, the next thing we're going to do is dihydroxylation of the eastern alkene, which might have been difficult to do chemoselectively if we'd installed a diene instead of an alkyne in the previous step. Here, the Sharpless dihydroxylation effectively installed two new stereocenters and placed both alcohols on the top face of the alkene. In the next step, the authors tied up those two alcohols in an acetonide ring to protect them before moving on. Now, on the left-hand side of the molecule, the alkene was cleaved to the aldehyde using ozonolysis with a thiourea quench. With the aldehyde revealed, the authors identified a suitable non-basic organometallic nucleophile to add a two-carbon fragment containing a masked aldehyde. Then, treatment with HCl resulted in the deprotection of the ethyl vinyl ether and the formation of an enal. Using tosic acid, the acetonide was then removed, and one of the secondary alcohols was selectively protected using TBS chloride. So with that sequence, the authors were able to make the C-ring fragment in 13 steps with an overall yield of 16%. Okay, so now that we've got the C-ring fragment ready to go, let's take a look at how the A-ring fragment got made. To make the A-ring, the authors started with a 3-carbon fragment bearing an ester on one side and a diethyl acetal on the other. First, they used terp-butyl acetate in a Claisen reaction to make a beta-keto ester. Here, the ethyl groups on the acetal and the terp-butyl group on the pronucleophile were both cited as useful steric elements for suppressing enolate exchange. 
Then a Nayori hydrogenation reduced the beta ketoester enantioselectively, and a protection step with TBDPS-CL resulted in the enantio-enriched beta-hydroxyaldehyde product. Utilization of a boron enolate derived from a 1,3-diketone allowed an aldol reaction to proceed with 2-to-1-diastereoselectivity. This product existed as an equilibrium between the open chain form shown and the cyclic hemiketal that can form from the alcohol closing down on the ketone. Then, using the evans saxena reduction, a further stereocenter was set diastereoselectively. The authors proposed that using acetone as a solvent is useful for preventing intermolecular reduction events and favoring selectivity in an intramolecular reduction mechanism, which translates to a higher diastereoselectivity. Treatment of this product with PPTS and trimethyl orthoformate resulted in the formation of a ketal and the closure of the A-ring. Next, some protecting group manipulations. The secondary alcohol was acetylated and the dimethyl acetal was deprotected to reveal the aldehyde. Now the authors were able to employ an allylation protocol developed by the Leighton group using a chiral diaminophenol to control the stereochemistry of the secondary alcohol formed during the addition. Then, silylation with test chloride followed by a hydrolysis step to convert the methyl ester to the carboxylic acid gave the completed A-ring fragment. The overall yield for the 10-step sequence leading to the A-ring fragment was 13%. So with the C-ring fragment and A-ring fragments obtained through the routes outlined so far, the authors are ready to move forward with fragment coupling. Using 246 trichlorobenzoyl chloride, they did a Yamaguchi esterification to couple the fragments on the eastern side. Then using PPTS and methanol, they were able to perform a Prinz annulation on the western half of the molecule to close up the macrocycle. An ozonolysis on the terminal alkene of the B-ring was fortunately successful in the presence of several other alkenes on the molecule, which provided the ketone shown in the product. Then, using an inoate to dienoate conversion developed by Rignovsky, the authors used the alkynoic acid to reveal the desired diene motif. Using a chiral phosphonate developed by Fuji, originally for the enantiotopic discrimination of carbonyls, the authors were able to install an enoate with a desired Z alkene geometry. Finally, a global deprotection with HF pyridine resulted in the completion of the total synthesis of bryostatin 1. Alright, thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and share. Please send any questions and comments to synthesisworkshopvideos at gmail.com and follow us on Twitter. Alright, see you guys next time.